So if you don't particularly care about your engine, this isn't the video for you. But if you'd like a primer in oil, what it contains, how to choose an appropriate oil for your car, and basically everything you need to know about oil so you can make an informed decision, then this is the video for you. So we're gonna be dissecting oil and just explaining the main components and giving you all the information you need when you go out to buy oil. So the confusion that you often get in the shops, the advertising and what people claim is often not backed up in fact and in reality. So we're gonna dissect a few of the myths as well and stay tuned for more in-depth look at oil. So within the engine, the oil is absolutely vital. You've got components, metal components, rubbing against other metal components at high velocity and at extremely high temperatures. Now, without the oil, the friction would build up to the point that everything just seizes and things start to break or the engine starts running too hot. So the engine oil forms a layer a barrier between the metal surfaces to enable them to slide over each other much more fluidly and efficiently without building up that friction. So in order to do this, it protects the engine from wear by forming a sacrificial layer and allowing the metal on metal parts to just slide over each other. But it also reduces the heat buildup as well because you're reducing the friction. So your oil has a lot to do with the way the engine runs, the performance you get from it and the economy you get from it, which are factors that are often ignored when people go out and buy engine oil. So there's two primary types of engine oil. There's mineral oil and synthetic oil. So mineral oil is the stuff that is pretty close to what comes out of the ground. It's graded, put in bottles with various additives and then sold. Synthetic oils go through a whole series of processes to ensure that the components within that oil are precisely engineered and it, it leads to much more uniform sizes in the molecules in the oil itself, in the base oils. And the synthetic oils can be very precisely engineered to have a wide range of operating temperatures or a very narrow range of operating temperatures depending on the application that it was designed for. Got a little favour to ask, can you just drop us a like and please in the comments let us know what car you've got, what your plans are for it, what mods you've got and what your experiences are. It really helps us to get out there. We're a very small channel so we really appreciate the feedback from our viewers. So most modern engines are better suited to synthetic oils but there's some, certainly some exceptions out there. So please let us know what oil you're using in your car. It's always good to just get as much feedback as possible and it just helps Help us all to improve our knowledge and understanding of uh, the various requirements of all these different cars. Another function that's often ignored with the engine oil is the fact it can be used to assess problems and faults within the engine. So if you were poorly, you might go to the doctor, you might stick a needle in your arm, take out some blood and send it off for analysis and from that they can work out what's going wrong with your body. Engine oil is no different to that. It contains all of the byproducts of the combustion process, components from the engine that chip off and wear off. And looking at the makeup of the oil that you've got in your engine, it can tell you a lot about the condition of the engine, how efficiently it's running and help you to flag up problems. So sometimes the first warning you get of an issue in your engine can be found in particles that have been deposited in the engine oil. So before you throw away your old engine oil, it's worth thinking about getting it analysed. Now you can get very simple home analysis kits that you can do yourself where you just put a spot of oil on and it gives you information on what is present in those or you can send it off for lab analysis which is a little more expensive and probably totally unnecessary for most of our viewers but if you're a car nerd and you're fastidious about things that may well be something that appeals to you. So engine oil also regulates the temperature of the engine. We've mentioned its cooling benefits because it reduces friction but it also as it flows around the engine distributes the heat more evenly so it ensures that there's no hot spots in the engine. So typically in an engine the pistons, the cylinders around them and the exhaust side of the engine would get very, very hot. So with the oil flowing around the engine, it moves that heat around the engine and prevents those hot spots from forming. So there's another beneficial feature of oil that's often overlooked. And choosing the right grade of oil can actually help the engine to warm up more quickly. It depends what grade you've got when it's cold and when it's warm at operating temperature. So you've got your pistons inside the cylinders that do a lot of the work of the combustion process, but the rings around that are vital. They stop the air pressure inside the cylinder and the combustion process from 
shooting by the piston, causing all sorts of damage in the engine. Now, the oil actually forms a bit of a, a layer or a barrier between the piston and the cylinder wall. So it's vital that that happens to ensure the efficient running of the engine and to make sure you've got the maximum amount of power from each stroke of the piston. So inside an engine, you may have vibrations as well as the general moving and sliding that goes on. So the engine oil can act as a, a shock absorber between those vibrations and help to dampen them down. So pretty much every motor oil that you get nowadays contains an anti-corrosive additive. So within an engine, it, it, the primary construction of an engine is metal. And when metal is exposed to oxygen and moisture, it degrades, it starts to rust. So the engine oil has got properties within it that coat the engine coat the metal and prevent that oxidization process from taking place so it really can prolong the life of the engine and that's really why if you're storing an engine over long periods of time it's good to run it occasionally and just make sure that the oil has flowed over all of those components within the engine and further protecting the engine against corrosion while it's in that stored state so motor oil is not just a question of pouring oil into a bottle and, and selling it to people there's a whole host of preparations scientific research research that goes into it and various components and chemicals that are added to the oil to ensure that it does a good job in protecting your car. And that's what makes choosing the right oil difficult when you go out into the shops. You can't really just go on the grade of the oil. You've got to look at the components, the standards that it's been formulated to meet. So you've got a base oil that's typically delivered to your oil factory and they will typically grade it, analyze it, and take from that base oil the most favorable characteristics that they want in the oil that they're actually producing for sale. Then it goes through the blending process where a whole host of additives are blended with the oil. It's always surprised me how precise the engineering is that produces the engine oils. It's not just some guy with a bucket pouring stuff into a great big vat and then stirring it. It is very, very precisely monitored, measured out and produced. And that's really why we pay so much for these premium oils because of the work, the research and the production costs that go in to ensure that every drop conforms to whatever standard it is they've been formulated to meet. The oil blend is then circulated and measured and monitored and they make sure that the oil is as pure and close to the spec that they want to reach as possible. So you can guarantee that by buying the same oil from the same manufacturer, the formulation is exactly the same. If it's done a good job in protecting your engine for the last five years, it's going to do so for the next five years too. Not that I'm advocating you don't change your oil every five years. I'm just saying that if you buy engine oil over a five year period, it will still be the same oil over the next five year periods. Just thought I'd get that in there before I get comments from people saying, ah, you've got to service a car more regularly than five years. So before an engine oil is actually released to the public, it is tested in a hot engine. The engine is fired up. The components in the engine are disassembled, measured, reassembled, run through the oil through a vigorous testing process. Then it's disassembled again. And they just check for the wear characteristics on the engine in the various different areas. And if there's a problem, they may have to change the formulation of oil until they get the right one. So what do engine oils actually contain? Well, one of the main components of an engine oil is a viscosity enhancer, which improves the viscosity of the oil. It helps it to flow more freely. So you would start with a fairly low viscosity base oil, and then you would add polymers to it. So methyl methacrylate and ethylene propylene are two quite common components that are used to enhance the lubricity or the flow rate or the viscosity of your engine oil. The unique behavior of these molecules ensure that they are very thin at low temperatures, but as the temperature increases, they expand, helping to ensure the uniformity of the way the oil flows in various different operating conditions and temperatures. Other components include metal phenoxides, which prevent the oil from building up sludge. So as oil is used in an engine, it will collect all of the sludge and dirt from the combustion process that's in the bottom of the sump, little bits that are broken off in the engine. Um, the dirty combustion process will leave residue on the pistons that the oil will come into contact with. And over time, the oil would potentially become sludgy or blocky. So this prevents that from happening and helps to ensure that the engine 
engine flow smoothly. It's vital to have that in a turbo engine where you've got turbos spinning at very high velocities at very, very hot temperatures. But it's a good characteristic to have in pretty much any oil. Then you've got zinc, dialkyl, dithiophosphates, which plays an important role in preventing scuffing within the engine. It's an anti-wear agent that bonds to the metal surface, forming a sacrificial layer. So as things rub against each other, it's that sacrificial layer that takes the hit and not your precious engine components. Then you've got a whole host of detergents and dispersants that are added to the engine oil. So it's like washing up, but for your engine. And these things help to break up the dirt and the grime and all the grot that builds up in the engine and make sure that the engine oil helps to clean the engine as it flows around. It prevents the contaminants from bonding to the metal parts in the engine, where eventually they would just build up and cause all sorts of problems depending on where they are in the engine. It can have quite serious consequences if you've got a buildup of deposits within the engine. So dispersants actually prevent these components that the engine oil has picked up from clumping together. So again, it helps to prevent sludge from forming within the engine oil. So most manufacturers have actually come up with a specific specification for the engine oil they use. Volkswagen, for example, would typically say you need to use VW 504, 506, 507. Um, the 504 is generally a, a fairly short life oil that you would change every 9,000 miles. The 507 is one of their long life oils that reportedly lasts for about 24,000 miles. So look at your manufacturer's requirements, not just the numbers of the oil, the viscosity rate rating on the bottle is just the baseline, it's an indicator. There's so much more to oil, you can't really go by just the viscosity on the bottle. You've got to look at the standards that that oil has been formulated to meet and just ensure that that is suitable for your engine. Now, I know all the guys watching this with a big block classic American muscle cars are probably laughing at us Europeans getting quite paranoid about the oil that we use, but our engines are quite delicate. They really are quite fussy when it comes to the components within the engine oil. And generally, if you want to improve the lifespan of your engine, it makes sense to do your research and make sure that you choose a good quality oil. And I'd also say that a lot of the big box car part stores sell very generic oils with very clever marketing that are not necessarily high performance engine oils, even though they claim to be. You compare those with the specialist aftermarket of engine oils, and it's a world of different it's like night and day in some cases. So be very careful what you buy. Let us know in the comments what your thoughts are on engine oil, what you use in your car. So I really hope this video has been useful to you and interesting. Please share it, please drop us a like. It really helps us to get out there. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Don't forget to stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.